to the follow up from last night's video uh, where we took the E7200 from 2.5 gig to just under um, 2.9 gigahertz. Um, today we're going to go a wee bit further with the overclock and we're going to go um, and overclock the memory somewhat and um, I'm going to show you a little show you a little bit around the system um, because after uh, yesterday's video we've had some people um, saying uh, why can't I overclock well either because you've got a laptop and you're a nugget or you um, don't have the right setup so the setup that I've got here is the E7200 processor which is cooled by a Zygmatek Thor's hammer with two 120mm fans on either side of it in push-pull configuration. I've got uh, two gigabytes of cell shock um, memory and a, um, if you can see that there, a Palette GTS 450 graphics card. Um, also, I've got it set up on the Cooler Master Lab Bench um, with an Antec Tough Power 650 watt uh, power supply and uh, OCZ um, Vertex uh, 200. Uh, sorry, OCZ Onyx series um, solid state drive, um, which is 32 gig. Um, the motherboard that I've got it on is just a cheap piece of crap. It's uh, ASRock uh, G31MS. Um, there's, it's not going to give us much in the way of an overclock, but it will give us enough to take us through and uh, give us give us what we want from from this demo today. So now we're going to go in. Uh, we're going to configure the CPU. Um, Pretty much the same way as we did uh, last night, um, without linking the speed of the PCI Express slots um, to the the North Bridge. It doesn't make any difference whether you do. It just tends to, to screw things up. So instead of going up to 310 uh, megahertz on the frequency this time, we're going to go up to around about 333. Um, this should give us uh, about 3. Point, about 3.2 um, gigahertz. Um, I should keep us stable at that and also what we're going to do is we're going to disable the thermal throttling and the um, clock modulation and the speed step which Intel always puts in um, from there we're going to go into the chipset and configure how everything runs through the chipset um, we don't want to remap the memory um, but we do want to alter the frequency of it. So instead of it running at um, 667 megahertz, we want to run at uh, 800 megahertz. But because we've overclocked the processor, it's going to run at 1 gigahertz um, or 1000 megahertz. Um, obviously, to do that, we are going to need to put some more voltage through it. Now, you want to check the back of your RAM sticks to see what the recommended voltage is. Um, on this RAM, I know it is. Um, 2.2 uh, volts um, if you want to, to put it up to its maximum potential but we're not quite going that far so I'm going to leave it steady at 2.144 um, Northbridge has a bit more to cope with because we're putting so much extra through the processor so we're going to give that a little bit more voltage now um, and run that at uh, 1.272 VTT voltage Again, we can keep that at 1.21 because we're not going to the extremes. Um, we want to turn the intelligent energy saver off because that's a load of rubbish. And the 1.25 volts, uh, sorry, the 1.5 volt, we can uh, bump that up to 1.5125. So that is how we want to configure, or that is the uh, the configuration that we want to use. Um, for the, the, the BIOS and the way everything will run and we're going to demonstrate that um, by running 3 Mark 6 so we'll save those changes and we'll reboot so here we go, that's the end of the test uh, we've got 13,000 marks, it's 3,000 more or 30% increase from what we had before uh, that can be up to 20 frames a second in some games 
so it's well worth checking out. Um, if you have any comments, feel free to leave them. Um, if you don't know what you're doing, please don't try this at home. Um, if you break it, I can't be held responsible and you'll probably void your warranty. Um, so from us here at Chimera Systems, um, we shall see you soon.